Hello and welcome to the latest in our Stories from the Strong Room series. For those of you who missed our earlier videos on the life of Winifred Holtby and her famous novel South Riding, these stories are on a range of topics which have been informed by the collections housed at the Hull History Centre. If this sounds of interest to you, then remember to subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon so that you're notified whenever a new video is uploaded. There have been members of the Jewish community living in Hull for over 250 years. They have contributed much to the life of the city and this talk focuses on how some of those members made a living. A number of the images within this talk have been taken from the community's own archives which are held at the History Centre, along with images from other collections also held there. For the Jewish community, making a living has often been an aspect fraught with difficulty. Historically, many places restricted access to certain occupations and careers. In addition, many trades were controlled by guilds which often barred Jewish people. Members of the Jewish community rarely became farmers because of the restrictions on the holding of land. As a result, Jewish people had to make a living elsewhere. Some became money lenders, resulting in their gaining considerable prominence in the field of banking and commerce. Other members of the community were able to secure employment due to the requirements of religious observation. For instance, specialised garments afforded work for tailors and seamstresses, whilst kosher meat requires butchers and prayer books need printers. However, especially in the early years, most members of the community were poor and struggled to make a living. They worked as merchants, peddlers, pawnbrokers, cap makers, seamstresses, weavers, silversmiths, butchers, bakers, shopkeepers, innkeepers and tailors, like these later workers from Lavines. Some of the first members of the Jewish community to settle in Hull can be identified through registration documents compiled under the Aliens Act of 1793, which required the registration of all overseas arrivals into the port. This image shows the registration, from a few years later, of Israel Brath and Isaac Solomon, two cloth dealers from Poland. Many of those arriving in Hull were small trailers and dealers. Such businesses required little capital and a quick turnover and would service the local area as well as those working on the ships. Some of Hull's earliest traders within the Jewish community included Michael Levy, who in 1770 is the first identifiable member of the community who, with any certainty, owned a business, and he was a watchmaker. Joseph Lyon, who in 1792 worked as a slot man, that is selling ready-made clothes to seamen, and by 1809 had become a pawnbroker. By 1826 we can add Solomon Mayer, another pawnbroker, and Israel Jacob, a silversmith, to the list of traders. By the 1830s the first members of the Jewish community working as professionals have appeared. For example, there was Isaac Lyon, a surgeon, and J. L. Levinson, a dentist, both of whom would go on to address the Hull Literary and Philosophical Society, at the time Hull's leading learned society. Another su successful businessman and professional from the Jewish community was Benjamin Septimus Jacobs, who became an architect. He was the son of Bethel Jacobs, a noted jeweller and golden silversmith, and someone who was heavily involved in civic life. Benjamin designed many buildings in Hull and across the country. These include the old Yorkshire Penny Bank in Hull's Queen Victoria Square, now a coffee shop. This image is of one of his designs for an extension to the Pacific Exchange on the city's High Street. Many members of the Jewish community were involved in aspects of the clothing industry also known as the rag trade. 
This image shows a number of young men, many of them Jewish, waiting for vessels to arrive at the docks in 1925. Acting as agents, they sold clothes to the crews of the vessels which arrived from Scandinavia and Eastern Europe. This age-old practice would continue for many more years. One of the many prejudices faced by those members of the Jewish community involved in the retail trade centred on Sunday trading. Most shopkeepers like to provide a service to their customers as well as make a profit. However, trading on a Sunday brought many restrictions. This document from the Hull Magistrates Court in 1892 shows prosecutions under Sunday trading laws. Some of the shopkeepers prosecuted include a number of members of the Jewish community. This section shows that Moses Wolfe of Upper Union Street, Abraham Slibko of Car Lane and Mark Stalowski on Coltman Street were among several others who, were all, who all found themselves in trouble. Many members of the whole Jewish community settled in the area around Osborne Street and these images from the City Council's Health Department in the 1920s and 30s show just a few of the businesses around the area serving that community. This image shows the corner of Waverley Street and Cogan Street. On the far right on Cogan Street is the Hebrew Synagogue, which had been the former Salem Congregational Church. In the centre is the newsagents run by Mrs Alice May Hinch, but next door on her right is Israel Bentley's hairdressers. And a couple of doors to her, to her left on Waverley Street is the tailor Lazarus Levi. This is another view of the same area, this time on Osborne Street itself. We start with the Danish Lutheran Church on the left, next to the Cooperative Society warehouse. At number 83, although empty at this point, had been where Abbey Shapiro operated as a fruiterer and greengrocer. Then we have Levine's Fish, Ice and Potato Merchants. Ali Hassan, a grocer, was at number 91. 93, the Black Horse Beer House had been run by Isaac Aaron before Barnett Marks took over as a purveyor of wines and spirits. At 95, across Lower Union Street, was Yetta Atten, a lady's hairdresser who was the daughter of a local rabbi. This picture, from an original held by their grandson Jonathan, shows Jack and Rebecca Levine outside their fish shop on Osborne Street in the 1950s. As well as the fish, ice and potato shop business, Rebecca also ran a fish fryers. Betty, a former volunteer at the History Centre, vividly remembered cycling down to Osborne Street to collect their fish and chips. In this picture from 1970, we have Lionel Cockle with his clothes stall in what was officially called the Open Market in Hull's Trinity Square. Cockle was one of several Jewish traders working on the market, as the City Council's Markets Committee reported it was usual practice not to charge Jewish traders when they didn't open their stores on Saturdays during Jewish, Jewish holidays. Ever since immigration through Hull began, while some members of the Jewish community stayed in the area, most left, leaving for pastures new. In addition, in the years after the Second World War, there was a great deal of redevelopment, especially in areas devastated by the Blitz. As this image shows, the Osborne Street area was one such part of the city affected, and many people left, often heading out to the suburbs of the West. Whilst this was not unique to Hull, the city's Jewish community has had to face three main issues emigration, assimilation and secularization. Despite these issues, Hull's Jewish community has left a tremendous mark and a great legacy which has imbued its public spirit in the city. A spirit of education, 
through organisations such as the Hull Literary and Philosophical Society, a philanthropical spirit of supporting each other and doing what is right, a political spirit to get out and make changes, and, in the context of this talk, a business spirit, from those early entrepreneurs to the shopkeepers and the professionals of today. And finally, the community has passed on its energy, an energy that allowed it to make a contribution to the city far out of proportion to its size. This has been a bit of a romp into what is a fascinating subject, and if you are interested in discovering more about the Jewish community in Hull, then check out the Hull History Centre website, where we have a research guide to help you find relevant materials. If you're here through YouTube, I've added links in the description box below, so check those out and remember to subscribe to our channel to get notified whenever new videos are uploaded. Thank you for listening.